Hello. Hello again. Hello again. Okay, do you so, have my sound, Samit? Yes, yes, I can yes. hear you. So sorry for the technical problems. Sometimes it happens out of control, these online yes. stuff. So thanks for joining. We're super excited to have you at PA Talks 40. Thank you so much. And, uh, thanks for accepting our invitation. We haven't far talked with any Iranian architect, like after mm. PA Talks 5, I think, with Habib Majdabadi. We, we couldn't have the time to, uh, or, or the opportunity to talk with any Iranian artists. So welcome, Mahdi, if you want to say hello to our audience. Uh, hello to your audience and to you, exactly. Thank you for uh, your inviting to the fantastic platform. I really like your platform. I will talk about that, but uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm all yours. Thank you so much. It's, <laughs> it's great to see you here. So. Uh, can you briefly introduce yourself and also how did you become an architect? Why did you choose this profession? Sure. Um, first of all, I'm architect and designer and co-founder and founder of the Gutti Studio. And uh, I've always been passionate about the architecture, you know, about the created something, the architecture. Uh, for example, I can say when I was seven or eight years old, uh, I, I always uh, try to create some things, uh, small models, you know, about our own houses and uh, with my uh, father's x-ray papers, <laughs> documents, and it's very interesting for me to uh, create some things new. And for example, uh, I am trying to uh, candy and uh, trying to, uh, for example, in the sands, creating some caves in the sands and, and create the corridors. Of, uh, in that you know uh, uh and always really i said i remember always love to create something new uh and after that uh, uh when i was a teenager and uh, uh, i was played guitar and exactly blues and progressive rocks and you know, try to uh, create my own uh, pieces you know and uh, all of this together i call it together and uh, i decided to create it uh, my own uh, path in the architecture field. That's awesome. Uh, that's Thank great. You. So when did you establish the office CAAT or do you call it CAT or CAAT? Uh, what's the difference? CAT, CAAT, uh, it's from <laughs> your architecture, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you when, know, did you, when did you establish this office and why? Uh, I'm um, establishing bases in Tehran and you know, um, Hamid, uh, we are dr uh, always um, try to um, design everything about the architecture, and uh, that's mean uh, try to design in any scales. You know, and we try to uh, design um, the power of designs and the uh, every context and every things. You know, I, I, I must have talk about the story about that, that uh, for example uh, uh actually uh, during and uh, my childhood i'm uh, traveling with my parents uh, from place to the place with the do with the two different uh you know ambience with the two different contexts for example you know we uh, we are in uh, sydney we're living in sydney and after that we come back to the iran for my father's job and go to the border areas into Zahedan, the, uh, the, the private border areas. And you can imagine the between this, uh, for example, two uh, contexts. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm always uh, concerned about to, uh, I, how can I provide the comfortable uh, living conditions for the uh, people that uh, live in this um, context, the lacking benefits, you know. And uh, after that, after years, after several years, uh, when I graduated, uh, I have been uh, worked at the architecture firms uh, in the uh, Tehran, and I'm go over which there, office, with, which which offices did you work? I was worked with the Bonsar with uh, Mr. Majidi, is one of the best architects, and I really love his personality. And uh, parallel with that times, it's very interesting to have it because parallel with that times, I'm trying to having uh, participated in the competitions, you know, participating in the com uh, several international competitions. For example, uh, on that time, uh, I tried to gain my experience in this, uh, uh, in, about the architecture in that time. For example, in the Evolos competition, I think uh, several Expo Pavillons and uh, the Helsinki Museum, if you know about that, in, uh, the Guggenheim Museum. I do. Uh, yes, and all of these things, um, and that story I said to you, I, I created me, um, 
to um, select my own path, you know, uh, to create my uh, architecture firms uh, with this approach. Okay, I see. Uh, talking about your approach, uh, how much of your architecture principles and design philosophies are fed from the rich culture of Iranian architecture, like from hundreds of years ago? Can you tell us what unique aspects do you see in historical Iranian architecture that inspires you? Uh, you know, um, uh, I think exactly the, the Iranian architecture, you know, they, uh, they are very similar into the spa spatial uh, natures, you know, but have a difference between the details. For example, within the cultures, the, the people behaviors together, uh, for example, in the, um, I can say the climates and the locations and uh, all of the thing can uh, maybe have a little bit uh, uh, difference, but in the, the nature of the, all of the, I think is similar together. For example, uh, uh, I can, um, and a very interesting thing in Iranian architecture for me is uh, everything is merged together. For example, you can see the mass and the structures and for example, the spaces, all of these things, elements work together and created one thing, you know, and I think it's very fantastic uh, feature uh, because uh, it's very abstract and, you know, without any base things. You, for example, you can see the domes, they are deformed, they work with the structures and uh, the, the places there's uh, under that is work for the uh, events, for example, the naves and all of things uh, try to uh, do the works, you know. Uh, for example, and how we inspire that uh, things in our projects, I can say, um, for example, in S1 project, we uh, is still on the construction, you know, that uh, this project, you know, this project, and yes. uh, we try to, uh, we study about the traditional uh, homes, uh, houses in Isfahan. Uh, Isfahan is people have a very uh, nice uh, the, uh, collaboration together and have a nice treatment and they, they have a nice lifestyle exactly because they uh, always maybe they are living with their guests, with the, the parents, you know, with the families, they're living together. And uh, when you see that, uh, for example, uh, the traditional house, you, you, can, you can see that a relationship between the spaces, the function, for example, how to yards work with the kitchens, how to yards with, uh, work with the uh, guest rooms, you know, and how the functions work to the open up uh, spaces and with the people situation here there. And we try to transform these horizontal uh, geograms to the vertical ones, uh, because we, uh, this project that I'm talking about, that is uh, the project of, uh, in the, the dense context, you know, uh, and we need to compact all of this together, but we need to save this spirit, the, 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 the spirit and the souls of the, this traditional connection together. And uh, that uh, we do is uh, we you know, created this, uh, all of these things, all of these function and diagrams and vertical diagram together with only one line. And we try to connect all of these functions only uh, into a one abstractively thing together and created one um, unique thing, a new language with the, uh, I think, um, with the uh, rememberable or the, better I say with the traditional souls of the spillings. That's amazing. Uh, talking about your projects in Kahrizek residential building, you have used inexpensive and mm. local materials such as yeah. brick uh, to create a very dynamic and playful facade. Can you talk about this project and how was the idea of using brick in this way uh, was born and how did you implement it? Mm -hmm. uh, Chat is a, um, a very focal point for uh, us and for our office. Um, uh, you know, when the, the, our clients ask us to create something surface of some uh, facade for this project because he uh, con constructed two or three levels of this project, um, uh, we come back and see the project first. Uh, let me please uh, hand it up to, uh, first uh, because I think it's very important to open about the threshold in this project and in all of these projects that uh, the context related with our projects. You know, the threshold is a very, uh, um, I think, important role, uh, plays an important role in our projects. You know, uh, as uh, I think Robert Fanchery says, uh, the surface, hidden surface between the two reality spaces, I think. Uh, with a different treatment, uh, we can say there's thresholds. And uh, 
we try uh, to uh, find the way uh, that project, and uh, I said the project uh, defined uh, the role of the, these thresholds in the projects. And only we try to uh, find this way and uh, try to have a good question for our uh, project. After this, we go into the designing the, the everything. For example, exactly in this project, in the Kahrizag, you know, the Kahrizag, uh, I think you know about the, that context. Like that, uh, uh, Zahidan, I said, is, uh, uh, with the, uh, I think, uh, the lacking of the, the uh, resources, uh, some of the resources in this context, and they immigrate uh, uh, with a culture, with a different culture. You know, we must study about this culture because most of the people that are living over there are immigrated in other countries and come over living over there right. and we must to have a pro uh, i think uh, anthropological really i said that um, study in this project uh, first in the first step we go to solve the, the programs into the, this project and then for example the where they're located where they uh, should be located for example and after we study about the programs into the whole for example the uh, kitchens where the kitchens or where the rooms and how they work, we, we see that we need, we don't have enough space for uh, them, for the, for the spaces it needs for the project. And we try to uh, create some models uh, to our surface and give the function to them and injection this function to behind this project and merge these things together. For example, if we have rooms, the rooms are uh, related with the uh, uh, closets and we in the in the surface in this maybe facade we try to solve this uh, uh, closets things or for example in the kitchen we need the storage or we need a, for example a balcony uh, somewhere and all of this function injection into the uh, project and I think the threshold find the way in this project and after the things uh, we uh, exactly the parametric architecture come help us <laughs> to realize <laughs> our okay. uh, imagines, really, I said that because you know um, the, we only have a basic brick material, and I think it's uh, imagine this brick. I really said that because it's very basic and very available things, and very local. And the fantastic thing is, all of the contractors can work with that, and thousands of years they know about that, about the techniques of the bricks. And then we try to you know, create the models with that. And uh, that's, uh, I think, Mr. I will tell you about the, all of this. Uh, Fifteen, I think, uh, models were created only in one weeks, in ten, I think, exactly in ten days. And it's been fantastic because we're trying to practice the contractor to use their technique uh, for our designing. You know, it's fantastic collaboration between the, uh, I think the local thing with the parametric architecture and marriage this together. And you can see what's happening here. And uh, for, I'm exactly want to say about the techniques. For example, we transfer in the, one of the modules, I, I, if I can open it for you, uh, we transfer the I shape to the L shape, you know, and uh, we morph it together with the two types and uh, create this surface, a structural surface, as you can see. And um, uh, we rotation all of these modules together. And for example, mirror of some of them, and uh, distribute some orders on that and you can see the uh, you know because all of the shapes are uh, have the only one and one nature of uh, have it once in the geometry and uh, that's i think that's uh, the feature of the parametrics and you can set uh, create the simple things and can reproduce that and create some things fantastic with uh, for example changing the orders and uh, you know if i want to say to the, talk about the cafeteria and just say to you know, one sentence i, I can say to you um is like to try to bring me meaningful solutions that actually have a reason to exist you know and uh, as i said the most important achievement in the project for us is after uh, several years we saw the we saw the people can use the architectural thinking and then use the architects for the project and we see the changing the ambience of this project and the, the location the context of the project and really uh we're excited about these things 
And uh, in another project, we have the uh, same techniques in Mahalat. I think you saw that project. Yes. And it's very, uh, it's, uh, I don't talk about the concept because um, it's not important to uh, talk about that. But but the te in the techniques, we are the same. So, but the difference is here uh, is about the uh, we use the stone in this case um, because the Mahalat is the center of the main stones in Iran and one of the biggest main Estonian cities in Iran, and uh, we gaining the experience in that, really. Amazing, Always. amazing. What is the role of context in your design process? Role of the context? Um, uh, I mean, uh, you know, the context in the, um, I think, in the Middle East is very different, and exactly in Iran, you know, um, it, it's very harsh thing. Uh, I, 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 you know, context is about the, the culture of the people, the treatment of the people, the collaboration between the, between the people and the users, the, about economy, about the policies, about the everything, as you can see, about the climate, about the locations you know and and i think it's very important thing in iran and all of this together merge and create some things like context maybe in another uh, countries for example we have a, another properties of that but but the, the context uh, i think is a very big meaning in the in the in this context in exactly i mean uh, in the middle east and exactly iran uh, because uh, if you ignore so one of these facts in your project, uh, your project maybe is going to destroy it, you know, and all of the features can affect directly if you give in your projects. And you must uh, go very carefully between these things and create your way to create some things new. And exactly, it's very important for us uh, context and to uh, have a big challenge with it in Iran, exactly. Amazing. And I'm going to ask you about your next project, which is the mosque. Designing the mosque requires very specific challenges for architects, like yeah. the strict and the detailed requirements of the uh, typology were established quite a couple of centuries ago and remained paramount uh, in creating a space to worship for uh, Muslims. Consequently, uh, these buildings have been associated and uh, associated with uh, conservative styles, employing well-recognized tradition, traditional forms and aesthetic details. In your Amir al Momenin mosque, we we see uh, you actually you have gone in the opposite direction, 180 degree opposite direction, and you have used these traditions and created a space and geometry yeah. that doesn't look like a traditional mosque and also I'm a fan of it. No, uh, how so do you much. think this is a true way of designing for traditional buildings? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your attention about this project. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we have a little difference between the, I think uh, we have a little difference between the traditional places with uh, religious places. You know, uh, uh, religious places are very rigid. Uh, all of the functions is rigid. Uh, you know, the people beliefs are have a direct uh, have related with the, uh, the 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 program of the project. The director related with that, and they believe that play. You you know, you must very carefully uh, come and in and change it. You know, and. Uh, in this case, exactly, uh, Amir al Monin project. We have the, the lucky Kafizak, we have a two reality world with the surface between, with the hidden surface between that. In, on one hand, we have a, the, some users, they want to see the holy things of the mosques and uh, they function, for example, they want to see the uh, vault and after that, the yards and after that, the doms and the naves with that probability of the programs. And in other hand, we have people, they have, they want to have only own uh, communities, you know, they want to have a very calm neighborhood. And uh, that's a sort of challenge for us. We try to create some things that answer to all of this question, to all of this needs for the users. And in other hand, uh, try to uh, be, uh, try to be a good neighborhood for the, 
a context, you know, and have a very calm collaboration with the context. And uh, exactly the surface try to hug, in, in this term, thresholds try to hug all of these functions together and merge to onto that like uh, uh, skins merging to the bones, you know, not only the wear the clothes. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, this threshold come and make our invitation vault and uh, the user, uh, if, when intro says, oh, well, it's pretty fantastic all things. And after that, we say the big dumb and we trade the names into that. And, uh, you know, uh, but on said uh, the, the viewer perspective of the uh, out of this project is very calm, shaded, the transfer shaded and the work together. And I think it's very good achievement to have these uh, universities together and have a fantastic collaboration between two interesting in this project for us. Yeah, That's exactly amazing. that. Yeah, exactly. But, but, but how do you think was the feedback from from the people uh, for, for for your design of the mask <laughs> because somehow <laughs> pe people want to feel the have the feeling of belonging to history or uh, if they know a, a certain type of geometry and uh, they would they would go for it uh, because mm -hmm. that, that that they would connect with it they would feel mm -hmm. more safe but now we're in going in, in a in another direction and we're building a mask that doesn't look like a mask. Yeah. And exactly. what do you think is the reaction of the people for these kind of uh, uh, another type of the typologies that we are proposing as traditional for traditional buildings? Uh, you know, uh, exactly when you design something's unique and uh, something's new, uh, the, the users and the people have a guard about that and yes. maybe <laughs> deny that, you know. But I think that uh, after several years, you can get your answers about these things. After the people use this function and uh, use your project and behavior between the project and uh, the users, I think can judge how we are successful in this project. I think, you, yes, I mean, I repeat again. Uh, no, it's I, okay, yeah. I, I heard it. Oh, it's okay, okay. Yeah, okay, it's okay. okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. That, that's good point to uh, emphasize on it. Uh, the people will see their effects after a couple of years. And I, the reason I pointed out this question because We've seen recently a couple of architects that is are doing really a great job. One of them is, uh, I think, Valiast Mask by, by Reza Dan Eshmir. Yeah, fantastic and project. Yeah, we have seen a lot of negative uh, points or critics about this project as well, but it is creating some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, another merging another kind of geometries with the mm -hmm. traditions. And uh, that's the yeah. point that we could bring new kind of spaces, new kind of, uh, not to just follow whatever is being done for 800 years ago and uh, try yeah. to bring something new, to say something new, create spaces, new spaces. That's the point that uh, we wanted to raise with this question. And thanks for just uh, mentioning about it. <laughs> so, uh, if we go uh, make our scale much bigger and talk about the city of the Tehran, and we will see a city with 13 million population facing with many uh, issues such as uh, density, overpopulation, traffic, and many other issues. Uh, you know better than me. Uh, how do you think architects can help with? overcoming of these kind of issues for mega cities such as Tehran. Yes, sure. Hamid, uh, could you uh, let me to talk about the uh, previous Valley S Mosque? Yes. Okay, yeah. go on. You know, I think uh, uh, the Valley S Mosque is really a fantastic project and really um, have a very uh, big challenge, I think, with the context. And I think the context is very strong in this project. And I think Reza Danishmir uh, created a fantastic and uh, smart uh, solution for that. Because 
you, in other hand, you in the context, I mean, the, the, that big uh, city all over there, you know, and you must have respect and you have a collaboration with that. And in other hand, you have a, a very, uh, uh, you know, very uh, important, very rigid uh, users in your project. And as I said, it's very important you know, when you want to design, you uh, work on the uh, one line and you must be very careful about that. Absolutely. Uh, yes. I totally and, agree uh, with you. I totally agree with you. That's important. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. And about the Tehran, um, could you please uh, ask of me? Course, again? Of course. Thank of course. Of course. I'll repeat it. If we go and make our scale much bigger and uh, talk about the city of Tehran, Tehran. Uh, we will see a city of 13 million, more than 13 million uh, population facing mm -hmm. with many issues such as density, overpopulation, traffic, and also uh, many other problems. How do you think architects can help overcoming these kind of issues in metropole cities like Tehran? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, exactly the, this big city's problems infrastructure, and I think the policies and I think the governments and need to, to have a big decision about this uh, infrastructure, for example, uh, the traffics and everything, the populations, the overpopulation, and many things about that. But uh, I think um, architects can um, have good points and can uh, try to uh, make some things new, something different in the smaller scales, you know, for example, the public space. And they, 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 they must be to uh, have it, uh, I think, responsible about that and to uh, have a creature to increase these spaces, you know. Uh, for, for example, I'm, uh, in, we, I think it's 2012, we um, submit our project and uh, propose for the evil competitions. Uh, and I think we want something of that. Uh, exactly is related with your question about that. And we uh, we try to, you know, the scary scrapper uh, Evolo try to talk about you know, the scary scrappers, and we the uh, the users must to uh, talk about the solutions for the big cities. And exactly, we try to talk about the Tehran with these problems about the traffic problems, about the, for example, lacking the lands. Uh, like of lands in Tehran and about the uh, population, overpopulation in Tehran. But uh, we try to have a, uh, ambitiously um, a solution for that. And um, we uh, created some two big legs into the land with a, a fewer footprints and than the typical ones, I think five or four more uh, time. Uh, and after that, we copy all of the green things in the land and paste it into the uh, above all of the things, uh, above the, our project, and cut on important things, uh, for example, on important buildings, the waste buildings, and uh, um, paste it into this project. You know, for example, above of our project, we have a, the public spaces, Greenlands, and in the middle of the project, we have the units, uh, and we try to uh, change them this. We were thinking about these units and created the uh, redesignable units, you know, the fantastic units too, and with a uh, parametric architecture uh, design in, in that years, uh, come help us uh, to create uh, this shape of this project. But uh, after the years, after the, I think we reproduce, uh, after the years, we, uh, we after that, we try to reproduce all of these uh, towers uh, in the lands. And you can imagine that we created that some ships uh, the green in the air, you know, after <laughs> several years, and all of the ground was green. And it's very, uh, I said, it's very ambitiously thing, but we need to uh, think like that. And we need to, um, I think, uh, talk about that with the governors and with the peoples to thinking like this and don't adhere about that. Uh, you know, I think that the uh, responsibility, uh, architecture, architects responsibility in these things and to talk about them, uh, these things and try to inject uh, the ambitious things to the people and the, everyone to try to think better for the cities and change this infrastructure in general, exactly. I see. What is the advantages and disadvantages of practicing for the city of Tehran? Uh, advantage, I think, uh, you know, Tehran is a, um, 
I think Tehran uh, as a cosmopolitan uh, and uh, people with a different behavior. And I think uh, we don't have a very clear uh, identity in Tehran. And this is the opportunity because you can design uh, and you can, uh, you don't have a very challenge with the context in designing in Tehran. For example, we have a project, I uh, send it for you and city garden layers, I think. And uh, yes, in I this know. project, yes, in this project, we uh, don't have a very uh, challenging like Kahrizag in the context challenge, but we try to only solve one thing in the project. And I think you can go broadly into one uh, concepts for project, one idea. And exactly is easier and uh, you can catch the uh, fantastic opportunities in this type. And the disadvantage about the Tehran exactly is very rigid rules, bad rules, really, <laughs> all special rules, you know that. What yes. it means because, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are uh, trying to improve in the world very quickly and the, the, you, we don't need really challenge with this type of the rules about the creative buildings and they must I change. See. I see. Thank you. So, uh, as we all know, in the past 40 years, uh, Iran has been struggled a lot with the uh, uh, with its political situation dealing with uh, crippling economical sanctions uh, that are affecting all industries, including architecture and construction. Uh, on the other hand, in the past 10 years, uh, we have seen many young and talented architects like yourself uh, tackling with you. these challenges and uh, creating astonishing projects inspiring from uh, the rich context of Iran and using local materials. With all these parameters, how do you describe the con contemporary architecture of Iran? Hamid, you know that really is, uh, I think it's very harmful and, and unfair, the sanctions. Really, I say that because it's not only about the architecture and fields or on industrial fields, it's about the people leaving. And it's very unfair. And, uh, uh, about the architecture, I can say, you know, when you uh, try to have a um, challenge with the idea, you know, I think, I think, I think uh, ideas need the challenge, the unique ideas created with the challenges, created with limited, you know, that's why we have a powerful, I think, architect in these uh, days and they, they because they uh, always have a challenge with these things and they must to create the new way uh, for uh, the Bay project to solve something, for example, about the techniques, for example, of the products of the projects, you know, and I'm really say that I'm, I'm um, privileged to be part of this, as you say, thank you so much, you know, you mm -hmm. told about that, but I really uh, love to be a part of this movement because I think um, they uh, try to uh, optimists try to see the future and have an uh, architectural language. We do have a, a created language with, a, I think, the uh, international architecture uh, firms and uh, movements, you know, and it's, uh, I think it's very good and I think it's very uh, fantastic things and I'm proud of them, these architects, exactly. Amazing, love it. Uh, so what do you think about new tools such as parametric and computational design that are emerging with architecture and design. And how do you use these tools in your office? Um, exactly, I think, um, you know, uh, one day if we said about the tools, we said, okay, only, only uh, computer can support the tools. Uh, in this uh, time, I can say um, the architecture means going to change to the computational architecture, you know? And I, I think the computational architecture uh, changed the meaning of the architecture. And you can see the products and you can see the uh, results and uh, exactly AI, if you see the AI, we can see the future. I really uh, out of fears and excited about the AI in the next years, because I think I can decide about ideas, you know, and it's very 
fantastic and uh, danger, you know, <laughs> both of them. <laughs> but uh, really, uh, in this time, I'm really excited about the creating something to with that. I, as I said to you, uh, with the robotic things, they create the buildings, and I think it makes you maybe you see the towers. Uh, make with the, this, uh, for example, the top of crane with the robots, some things. Uh, and I think yes. it's a merge to the architecture meaning. And uh, if you don't like that, you, can, you can't deny it, you know. It's yes. very important. And in our office, uh, exactly, we're using the softwares for that. We're using the rhinos and we're exactly about uh, the project we're using grass support this. But we, uh, if we need uh, to learn more about the some things we try to learn with your PA, fantastic <laughs> page, of this, uh, fantastic workshop in these Thank you. places, and we try to learn more about that. Thank you. Appreciate that. You. Appreciate Thank that. So what do you think about our platform, PA? Um, respectable and fantastic platform. <laughs> I really said that. You know, I think, Hamid, you created the windows to the future. Better, I can say, uh, you created the bridge between the, um, I think, the contemporary architecture and the uh, reality of the future. You know, uh, I mean, uh, everything of the, uh, of the future. You know, the future is very fascinating. I, I, the better I can say that in the present future, you know, because uh, you show the, uh, without any curtain, you show the, all of things in the, uh, these uh, parametrics architects about the products, about the, for example, techniques, and with the fantastic workshops, I'm really learning more about that and uh, collaboration between the, for example, architects and talk about the history of architects and biggest architects in your interviews. And after that, I can see that, uh, for example, uh, I guess so that uh, your workshops and this collaboration between two uh, generation, I think is very fantastic. Uh, can help the, all of the audience and exactly me and um, my colleagues to learning more about those things. And really thank you so much for this platform. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank Love you it. so much. And uh, lastly, what kind of advice would you like to share with uh, young professionals around the world? And also I saw in the comments that they were asking for uh, a couple of books you can suggest what kind of books to read about Iranian architecture and also general, if you can suggest some books. Yes, of course, man. I think um, uh, Yuhai Plasma's book is very fantastic. I talk about that. The um, Skill of the Skins is uh, one of the fantastic books. Uh, they can say, I, I, maybe I can found it here in my office, but I must uh, stand and go search it. But uh, okay. Uh, you know, I don't have any advices about, I don't, I don't advise, about it, but I, I try to uh, convey uh, the experience um, to your audiences. Uh, first, uh, do try to learn, learn and learn, really, really I said that, try to practice and um, know about the uh, historical things and about the history of contemporary architecture and architecture and after that, try to see the future, see the uh, follow the future of things in architecture, for example, and and after the reading the this ocean of that, and just just know where they're standing, you know, and after that decided the uh, own path and where we uh, want to do and what would they want to do, and uh, I think it's very important thing because, uh, and I maybe I advise in this case try to uh, create the best the best version of themselves, you know without any judgments and without, I think, with any um, compare with another persons. Amazing. Love it. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining to this live session. Thank uh, you so it much. It was an inspiring conversation. Do you have any final words to add? Uh, no, nothing. Thank you so much. Thank you to uh, your ideas to listen to this uh, conversation. I'm talking very much, I think. Uh, but. It's very fantastic for me to have this conversation with you and with the parametric architecture. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank your you. time and have a nice day. Have a Good nice night. Day. Good, <laughs> Good night. evening. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Goodbye.